My name is Incarnation from Cloud9, and this is my basic champion guide to Twisted Fate. The thing about Twisted Fate and Solok is you want to pick him into some matchups which are not too rough for you. So you don't want to play against Assassins, for example, because they're going to give you a hard time. And as TF, you want to be the one who is pressuring or at least not get pressured too hard. Because the good thing about TF is the map pressure he uh, applies. So if you get just get into an even matchup or whatever, and you can pressure the map, then that's pretty much the purpose of Twist of Fate. You don't necessarily have to get kills on him, you just need to apply pressure. And for laning, you're gonna have some hard matchups, but one way to um, avoid getting punished too early is you can use free red cards on the first wave on the castle creeps and just shove the lane, shove your lane in so that he, he doesn't have time to poke you down or whatever and harass you. So that's a little trick you can do with Twist of Fate. And you have to realize that you're going to be in some bad matchups. So you're going to have to like try to last it with your Q max range. Or just look to do other stuff on the map. Because he's not the strongest laner of all time. So you have to keep that in mind when you play him. And you can also... He's not that weak in lane. You can also harass with him. And you just walk up, lock in your um, gold card. And then Q them. And then walk back as soon as possible. You cannot really do hard trades with him, so you just want to try to like poke them with your WQ combo. And you can it would also be best if you wait for your third E, so you have like some sort of like burst or like bigger damage when you do the poke thing and then just back off but back off after that and repeat. In team fight, it mainly depends on what your team looks like and what the opponent opponent's team look like. Because if they have a fed carry, for example, or something, and you have a dive heavy com, what you can do is you can just ultimate into him or near him and just stun card stun card him and try to kill him together with your team. But in other scenarios, you just want to stay back and focus on the front line. But the good thing about TF is you want to have the Sonyas if you want to ulti in and dive in. Or you're just going to go in and get killed and you don't want that to happen. And some tips for TF is, when you shove the lane, uh, a good thing to do is just walk out of vision. Or like just sit somewhere where they don't have vision of you. Because it applies pressure on the map for them. If they have no idea what Twisted Fate is, they like automatically have to play scared on, on the other sides of the lane because of the pressure of his ultimate. As runes on Twisted Fate, you want to go 9 flat magic pen penetration in marks and scaling health per level in seals. You can also go, or I advise you to go flat armor runes if you're against an AD min. And on the glyphs, you can either go 9 flat magic resist or 9 scaling AP or even cooldown reduction per level. Um, it's probably easiest to play with the flat magic resist since you're gonna have um, a tough laning phase on TF. So that's probably easiest. And if you look if you just look to roam and scale, then you should probably go for scaling CDR. But again it also depends on what you choose to build on him. Because if you if you already get cap CDR from the way you build him, then you don't need that. And and for the quint you wanna go either free flat uh, AP or you can go Two or three movement speed quints, which uh, which a lot of Twisted Fates tends to do, because you want to look to roam and just apply pressure on the map. But I personally prefer going free flat AP, so you also have a somewhat strong laning phase. And for the masteries, I would go 21-0-9 with the biscuit. In rare scenarios, you can go 21-9-0 if you're against an AD champion and you really like want to small defense that the defense gives you. And for the skill order, you typically want to go W level 1, uh, and sometimes you can go E level 2, but usually you want to go Q level 2. The, the scenarios where you go E level 2 is if you want to stack up the passive and go for like a hard um, W combo with the E proc up, um, but it's typically only best if you're laning against a melee and the guy's like gonna take it or it's not worth it because usually it's just better to go Q and you want to max Q and Twisted Fade and then W after. So for item build there's a lot of different paths you can go in Twisted Fade. You can either go for Morello 
as your first item if you just look to try to roam and get kills. Or you can go for Lich Bane first item, which I personally prefer doing, which gives you more damage and makes you a bit stronger early on as well into Lich Bane. So you actually like, you. Ha I feel like if you do that, you have more of an impact on the game early on because then you actually do damage and you don't rely on your solo queue teammates to do as much damage. And then after that, I typically go Sonya second item. In some cases, I would build a Morello after, but typically Sonya, and then um, it's just pretty much standard build from there on into Rabadon, um, Void Staff, and then Luden's last item or something like that. You can even go Morello last item if you feel you need the CDR. And I always go for the CDR boots on Twisted Fate when I go for the Lich Bane build path. Thanks for watching this basic champion guide. Make sure to check out the rest over at lolpass.com.